This week I learned about Euclidean distance degree. The idea is more or less that you have algebraic variety, or in other words, you can think about you have some shape that lives in n-dimensional Euclidean space. This shape is described as a solution set of some polynomials. And we're going to take, let's take like n polynomials. And then inside this Euclidean space, you can have a point which either lies on the shape or lies outside of the shape. And the question is like, whenever you have a point outside of your variety, um, how, like you can compute the distance. Like for the given point, how many minimal distances you're going to have. So for example, if you can imagine like a sphere, then the center of the sphere is going to have infinitely many uh, possible closest points to a sphere. And uh, the way how to compute which, sphere, which points on algebraic variety are going to be the closest to the given point, we need to compute the critical points of the distance function, where we can define a distance function uh, based on some norm. Yeah, let's take, for example, like Euclidean norm and stuff. You have algebraic variety, you have uh, a point outside of algebraic variety, you pick your norm, you have the function of distance, and what you want to do, you want to minimize this distance, so you want to find the critical points. If you're going to pick some generic point, so by generic you mean some random point uh, in your space, uh, which uh, with probability one is not going to lie on your variety, because you can think about that if you have a sphere inside R3, the surface of the sphere in comparison to the entire uh, R3 is going to take such a small amount, so whenever you're going to pick the random point, it's almost impossible to land on a sphere. If, it, if you're going to give me uh, some algebraic variety at some point, how many possible points on my variety I have to my given point? And this can be measured by uh, Euclidean distance degree. One of the motivations why we want to study this because we have some data that comes with the noise, and let's say this data comes from, or like described by some equation, some polynomial equations. And one of the examples, what we want to do, we want to, for this noisy data, to recover the governing equations from which it comes. And especially when you have a noise, it's really complicated to do. But let's, for example, forget about the noise for a second. One of the cases is like polynomial interpolation, which we uh, all know how to do. Uh, by setting up this Wondermont matrix and finding the coefficients directly. Uh, when we have more complicated system and when we have like, let's say like a rational, you, you take the rational function uh, and what we're, what we're going to have with this rational function, uh, we, for example, if you will take like one over X, then you have um, like this hyperbola that looks like this. And the question is, like, if I'm going to sample the points from this hyperbola without the noise, how do you recover the governing equations of the rational function that describes this hyperbola? And one of the motivations of studying this is because sometimes what do we have? We have a parameterization of the solution set of some model, and this model is going to live in the ambient space. And this model will try to approximate some real-world data that we have. But this real world data is not actually going to be exactly described by a model, but it's going to lie outside of our model space. When we have this model space, which sits in like this large ambient space, how many possible solutions, how many possible parameters can you find inside your model space that will the best describe your, your data? If we instead of having this data have the actual functions, it's way easier to work because when we deal with the actual function, we, we have some expression. But when we work with the data, especially with the noisy data, we, have, we don't know, we have no idea what is our governing equation. So the idea is, is like, to try by having this noisy or not noisy data to approximately recover the closest solution, the closest kind of... Uh, in the case, if you have like polynomials, rational functions, or like, I don't know, uh, 
analysis not my string is huge so i'm catching up with this but any some sort of when you pick when you fix the family of the function that you want to recover and you sample some data from real world problems or like from synthetic function with noise or without noise and the question is like how to recover it back and the final step we have our model we have a point outside of our model which represents the target function that we want to learn but this target function is going to be modeled by some sample data and what we want to do we want to take the sample data construct the approximation of our target function and after this we have our model we have our target function we have a model and we want to compute the Euclidean distance degree so we can you want to see how many possible uh, critical points we have such that uh, how many possible solutions we have for our distance function and that's a really important question because it basically tells again like it depends on the kind of problem you solve but it, it, it tells you the richness and the variety of your solution set which is like really interesting on, on its own right and uh, there's a couple of applications which i can talk about but i will do it later but yeah but this is more or less the idea what i have been thinking uh this week about computing this those critical points